Hi, I'm Lily. I'm not Lily Evans. <laughs> Why do I keep saying that? Hi, I'm Lily Potter. <laughs> I really miss Lee. Stop laughing at my name. <laughs> Sorry, never thought I'd hear it. Hi, I'm Lily Potter. <laughs> I'm really miss Lee. And this is tea time. <laughs> So today we're going to be talking about gifted kid burnout syndrome. Do you want to talk about how you've experienced this first? Should we give background on this one? I don't know if I've actually experienced it. Um, it's always been sort of underlying expectations. So maybe an expectation you put on yourself as I, well, I find. Mm, no, I was about to say that. <laughs> yeah, you know, trying to aim high and do more than reasonably achievable. Not even more than reasonably, achie reasonably achievable, just as much as I can achieve, but... You're running a race that has no end. Hmm. And every time you see, seem to see the finish line, it gets a little bit further away. I think a lot of my pressure was external. It was... My mum always... I was the golden child! I was gonna do great things! I was a witch in a family of non-witches. So I think as soon as that came through and they had an idea of a potential that I don't know if it was ever reasonable or was ever expected, but I definitely felt that. And I think especially seeing the way they treat Petunia as well and seeing the difference between the two of us, I started to realize quite quickly that they wanted a lot from me that at the time I didn't realize was too much to be able to produce for them. But when I look back now, I definitely think they put too much on this young child and it created this monster in me where I felt like I had to do better than I was and I had to get top grades because I've been given this amazing opportunity that no one else even knew existed and I had to get good grades and I had to be the prefect and I had to do all of these things just to try and compare with the idea of someone who didn't even exist and I don't think I realized fully how much I was putting on myself until I think there was a few points but I think it was seeing the way James looked at me and seeing that he didn't see who I could be he could see who I was and that started to awaken something inside of me that made me realize that maybe who I am now is fine and I don't have to be the prodigy and I don't have to lead the world to be valuable because I was valuable to him. You're an authority. I'm enough. Far more than Maybe enough. he's an we extreme should, example. You should potentially tone it down a little bit. <laughs> I don't know, what about, what about you? Did you ever reach a point where you started to realise the mentality wasn't healthy. It was, I think you were right, it's more self-inflicted. Of Expectations for me have always been low. Um, really. <laughs> um, but I've always wanted to prove people wrong. Mm -hmm. And just continue to be myself regardless of my situation and everything about it. Of, um, I've set a bar for myself and I'm constantly aiming to be hitting it, reaching it, overcoming it, mm -hmm. um, to make sure that people don't worry about me. Yeah. And that it's not a big deal that I am more than my condition, I'm more than everything that is wrong with me. I'm normal, but I'm better than normal. <laughs> I'm just constantly striving to achieve excellence. Um, and I've been granted opportunities that I I'm so grateful for, I could never have dreamed to achieve. Yeah. And I don't ever want that to be wasted, the faith that people have put in me. Do you think, or do you feel like you've reached a point now where you know that the pressure you put on yourself was too much and you've, do you think you've ever reached a point where you felt, like maybe you've achieved that without even realising you've achieved it? I think so. I think I've achieved it and beyond, but at the time I didn't realise that I had. Yeah. So I've I've found the mark and I've crossed it and kept on running, which is incredible. But now I know my level mm -hmm. that I should be reaching, that I can reach without forcing myself, without creating, I don't know, um, like 
distress yeah. <laughs> to myself. How how do you think you found that? Just knowing your own limits and the people around you as well. Yeah. Mm. So I think the biggest thing that helped me realise that maybe the pressure was too much and it wasn't healthy for me anymore was the people around me mm. and being able to see myself through. I think the issue came from seeing myself through my mother's eyes and my father's eyes and seeing how bright I was meant to be. I didn't see how bright I already was mm. and I don't think they ever wanted that or intended that for me. But once I started making friends and I started seeing other people and how they looked at me and I started being able to laugh freely and just hanging out with you guys as well. I stopped feeling like I had to achieve something because I realised that what I wanted this entire time I already had. Mm. Hey. Appreci uh, appreciation. 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 Yeah. Appreciation. Appreciation. Maybe, maybe we should go back to those study mm, I know. <laughs> I we need to go back to the library. Year. Yeah. <laughs> All those all nighters. <laughs> It's something that, at least for me, it's something that's never really gone away. Where as I've gotten older and I've stopped being the brilliant wonder child that I was, the bar has gotten higher every time and less people have reached it. And I think realizing the difference and realizing that you don't have to always reach that bar has been really good for me. Yeah, it's definitely something that I think it comes in time. Even if you miss it, you can try, yeah. try again. Yeah. But it depends on what that bar is, I think. Depends on your situation, depends on your happiness. Set smaller goals. Is it worth sacrificing your happiness yeah. to reach that? Just because of what other people want of you? Yeah. How you want other people to perceive you? Or, or even yourself, really, I suppose. There's different ways to be wonderful. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be the president to be important. No. You don't have to hit the highest goal. You don't have to be Dumbledore. No. <laughs> you can achieve that importance on a smaller scale and still find the happiness that comes with it. Like, I found... I found that being important to my friends showed me that that's all I needed to be important to someone. And when I started to look at my relationship with my mum afterwards, I saw she was proud of me. And I didn't need to keep hitting those high bars for her to stay proud of me. She was just proud of who I'd become. Yes. And I think that's, I think that's the point I started to realise. And I still put too much pressure on myself. Because think, no one knows your own limits as much as you do. It's probably not always going to go away and figuring out when it's hitting and when you just need to check yourself and say, no, I'm doing enough. I am enough. I've put my 100% into this and I can't keep giving more. I'm a human being as well. Yeah. If you're struggling and it feels like an abyss, break it down. Look at, is it your relationships making you feel that way? Or is it your job? Is it your career? Is it your studies? Is it your future? Is it yourself? <laughs> is it yourself? Break it down into something achievable and just achieve those little steps. Be a good person. Be someone you'd be proud yeah, of. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Be yourself. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, <laughs> stay magical. Stay magical. <laughs> <laughs>